Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here, and today I want to talk to you about grouping in Pandas. Grouping is a really important idea and an important skill to have when you're working with Pandas. So I'm going to load up my normal things. I'm going to say import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, from pandas import series and data frame. You don't have to do that, but it makes it much more convenient. All right, and then I'm going to load up one of my favorite data sets, New York City taxi data. If you've seen anything I do on pandas, you've probably seen this before. So file name equals, let's do here, uh, courses, current data, NYC tab, and we're gonna get it from January 2019, a great year and a great month. All right, anyway, I'm now gonna say uh, df equals pd read csv of file name, and I'm just gonna load up a few of the columns. I'm gonna say use calls equals, and I'm gonna say here tpep uh, pickup date time. I'm gonna say trip distance. I'm gonna say here passenger count. I'm gonna say total amount. And I'm also gonna parse dates of the tpep pickup date time, just so we can play with that a little bit. And we do that, and we see that we indeed have a head here. It takes a few moments to load up because we do have a whole bunch of rows in this CSV file that I'm parsing. Ta-da! And we seem to have gotten it. And if I say df dtypes, great. So we're ready to go. We've got pickup date time is a date time 64. That's what we want. Then we've got integer passenger count, trip distance, total amount. So how about this? How far, on average, did people travel when there were... Uh, when there was one passenger in the taxi. Well, that's like a normal kind of question I'd want to ask, right? So I can say df where, you know, passenger count equals equals one, where I'm going to get a Boolean series back from this. And then I can apply this. I can say here df.lock where that's true. And we get that back. And I'm actually not interested in all the columns. I'm only interested in the um, trip distance. I'm going to say here trip distance. Remember when you use df.lock, you can use here a row selector and then comma and a column select, not color selector, column selector, right? And we get that back. So now we have one column there and I can say dot mean. Fantastic. So now I know how far on average trips went when there was one passenger. I'm going to ask a related question. How far on average did people travel when there were two passengers in the taxi. Well, I'm going to use a programmer's best friend, which is copy and paste. And I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I'm going to say passenger count is two. And we get that back. Now I'm going to ask another related question. How about with three passengers? At this point, you're saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is getting a little ridiculous, right? I'm asking the same question with very slight variations here. Basically, you know, what I'm really trying to find out is for each distinct value of passenger count, how far did people travel on average? That's really what I want to do. Now, if you're coming from a pro programming background, it might feel like the right thing that here you should use a for loop, but never use a for loop with pandas. The moment that you start using for loops in pandas, you're almost certainly doing something wrong. So what are you supposed to use instead? And here's where, what you want to do. You want to use grouping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say df, that's my data frame still, group by, group by, and I'm going to say here, passenger count. And then I'm going to say here, dot mean. Now, this is not quite going to work, but it's going to be close. So what does this mean? When I do a df.group by passenger count, what this means is for each distinct value of passenger count, that's what the group by means. And when I run the group by, I get back a group by object. Well, that's not going to do me much good. And I have to actually do something with it. And what I'm going to have to do is I have to apply an aggregation method, meaning a method that takes a whole bunch of values and gives me back one value. What would those be? Well, the typical traditional ones are going to be mean, min, max, standard deviation. Um, you know, there are a few more as well. Count. Some, those are the, the biggies. Um, or if it's min, it's the smallies. Ha ha ha. Okay, so anyway, df group by passenger count. And then I can say here, dot mean. Watch what's going to happen. I now get the mean for both trip distance and for total amount because it applied it to both columns and it separates it by passenger count. 
So when we have zero passengers, yes, there are taxi rides with zero passengers. These are the averages, average trip distance, average total amount. One passenger, average trip, trip distance, average total amount. But what if you're not interested in both of these? What if you have a really large data frame with lots of columns and you only want to specify one of those columns? Well, then you can do that. You can apply square brackets to here, to the end here. And I can say, uh, let's say trip distance. And so what this means here is for each distinct value of passenger count, show me the mean trip distance. And that's exactly what we get. And since we only have one column here, we get it back as a series. That's a pretty normal thing to want to do. And though we can, you know, we can get it back here. Now, of course, once I get these values back, I can sort them, I can search in them, I can do whatever I want. What if I want a different aggregation uh, uh, method, you know, different aggregation method? Let's say here I want to do, um, let's do um, max, or I want min and max. I want two of them, say two different aggregation methods. Well, of course, I could say here, you know, dot min, and then I can do it again. What do you know? It's zero and dot max, and we get those. Okay, well, this works, but what if I want to combine them? I can actually do that. I can say here ag, and then I can say here min max, and look what I get back. Now, now this ag here is kind of special, and you can do all sorts of wild things with it. What I've done here is a sort of simple example where I said ag, and then I put in a list the names of the methods I wanted to run. And here, each of the methods, min and max, is being run on passenger count. I'm sorry, is being run on trip distance for each value of passenger count. So what we're doing here is for each distinct value of passenger count, you know, um, get the min and max values of trip distance. And because we have two columns here, min and max, so we're getting back um, two different columns. I can even go, well, this is, this is like, I can go totally crazy and wild with this, but this is a good example of um, how we can do grouping. Grouping is incredibly, incredibly powerful. But I just want to give you one caveat. Remember that the group by is for each distinct value of, in this case, passenger count. That means that if you try to give it a float value or some other value for which you have many, many, many different values, distinct values in your data frame, you're going to end up with a colossally huge data frame and a lot of time and memory just wasted. So you really want to do it on categorical data or on very restricted integer data like I did here with passenger count. All right, I hope that this helps you to understand grouping in pandas. There's so much more to talk about, and I'll be back more with lots more about pandas and Python in general. Don't forget that you can always hit me up on Twitter if you have questions. Also, I tweet there on a regular basis about interesting Python and Pandas things I've discovered and the best questions I get from my students in class. Subscribe to Better Developers, my free weekly newsletter about Python. Subscribe to this channel. I'm everywhere. I will see you again very soon right here on this video.